Hey guys, my name is Shy, and to be honest with you, I am a little bit confused right now. And I think many of you guys are as well, because I sat down, I wanted to do a collective reading, but I've actually been tuning into, like, the little vortex of people who watch my videos. I've been tuning into the, into the energy for, like, a couple of days, actually trying to figure out when I should make a video. And it feels different than before, than it ever has before, because it feels like there is way more variation in your guys' energy. Like, even when I do pick a card readings, obviously there's like four different camps, you know, four different groups that get four entirely different readings, although sometimes there's some overlap and stuff, but usually <laughs> there is like something kind of holding it all together. And usually it doesn't feel like everything is drastically different, but right now it feels like everybody is having a completely different experience and like we are being um, almost like pushed apart to kind of sit in our own energies. And I mean, I don't think that's bad at all. I think it is serving a great purpose, but it makes my job a little bit interesting and I've been noticing the same kind of confusing... Like, it's hard for people to kind of communicate right now, it seems like. It's really easy to just get an off vibe and then fixate on that off vibe. Try to figure out, like, why does th why does everything feel off? Like, what's going on? So it's just a little bit weird. So I haven't really been able to put my finger on, like, what is going on in my, in my day or what is going on with your guys' energy or what is going on on the planet in general. I just kind of, I don't really know. But <laughs> um, I'm actually sitting down to do this to try and get a little bit of clarity on that, although... Even what I said just right there, I think is a habit that I should probably get try to get out of. I don't think I actually need to be seeking clarity if things are unclear. I can just sit and be confused and that's okay. Sometimes that is exactly what I'm supposed to be feeling. So I'm making a note of that. <laughs> um, but also I, I do have a kind of general theme for these four different readings I'm going to do. It's all about building foundations right now, building foundations, because I could say that this is all about a brand new fresh start, but I've said that before, and of course, you know, we have many, many, many brand new fresh starts all, you know, from now to the rest of our lives, that's what we're going to keep experiencing, but this time it really feels like the emphasis isn't so much on just like, wow, brand new, it feels like, okay, this is the time where certain things have been cleared away, and now it is time to really focus on building our foundations, building something solid, um, and this is a really long-term thing. And what long-term means to you will vary <laughs> um, depending on how how you want to experience your timeline. Um, but for me, this definitely feels like years. Like, like for many of us, I think this is a years-long thing. We're settling into some type of holding pattern, into some kind of prep preparatory pattern, like preparing for something, um, really trying to get things solid and good. And we're going to thank ourselves a few years from now when we are so good. So it might seem a little bit slow or frustrating or confusing or weird or blah right now, but I think this is all serving a much longer term purpose. So yeah, I don't really know what's going to come through in these cards, but general general, <laughs> general theme is building foundations. And I'm just going to see, these are just one cards. I'm going to draw more cards uh, as we go. So um, if you haven't already, go ahead and pick your cards. One, two, three, and number four. Hey, card number one, welcome to your reading. Um, before I even flip that over, I'm gonna draw your tarot cards. First up, six of discs, generosity. Discs in this deck is earth energy, it's pentacles. This is the field tarot. I just got it yesterday. <laughs> it arrived on my door on August 8th, Lionsgate, which was cool. Five of discs, destitution, <laughs> generosity right next to destitution. Interesting. High priestess. What's your archangel card? Authority. <sighs> Bottom of your deck. Choices. Seven of cups. So... 
you guys are in the confusion. I'm willing to bet. Seven of Cups is this... I don't know. I don't know what to do. There's so many choices. I can't figure out what's happening. It can also be like feeling in this kind of fog, <laughs> not being able to understand your path forward, not being able to see the path forward. The good news with the Seven of Cups is that you don't need to be able to see your way forward. That's actually the lesson with the Seven of Cups. Just feel your way forward in every moment. Drop out of trying to project your timeline. Drop out of trying to figure out what is real and what isn't. It doesn't, none of that actually matters. What all you need to be doing is taking it literally one single moment at a time, one singular moment at a time and feeling into every nanosecond. So this is like, don't even, don't even try to plan what you're having for dinner. Just wait until your body says, okay, let's eat that. Like really, really dropping out of planning your trajectory at all because <laughs> resources are on your mind in a big way, trying to figure out how to make ends meet, but also trying to figure out how can you help others? It feels like, this kind of feels like leaky bucket energy, what I call leaky bucket energy. Somebody who, don't actually, who doesn't actually have enough for themselves, but it, it then keeps trying to do too much for other people and give all of their time, energy, or money away. It, it's, there's this weird, weird tension here. wanting to give, wanting to be able to provide for others, but being afraid of this scarcity that is kind of dogging you. And your foundation that you guys are trying to resolve this is like a material problem <laughs> trying to solve your long-term finances trying to solve your long-term career prospects trying to make sure that you can feel secure in your home in your body in your physical environment because it's like what it feels like honestly is that money might be rushing into you sometimes you might receive a bunch of money all at once but then it just like flows right back out of you like you can't hang on to it like money is kind of flowing like water in and out in and out in and out like resources and honestly it feels like your emotional state is connected to money and you know if it's not money for you it's some other type of physical resource or physical sense of security um For some people, this is th these fears are really rooted in like a, the supernatural, <laughs> which isn't a word I typically use, but that's the word that, that comes to mind right now. It, it, like almost you're having fears about supernatural creatures or about negative entities getting you, and it's making you feel unsafe, making you feel unsafe, and making you feel like there's. The experience I'm having right now sitting here feeling your energy is it feels like there is knives all around me. It feels like like spikes, like the like there's spiked walls closing in around me. <laughs> so you guys, and you feel like you don't know how to figure out how to get out, kind of casting around you, maybe looking, hey, can somebody help me? Why can't anybody help me? Why, why isn't the assistance I need coming? Why isn't the support I need coming through for me? Why isn't this happening? Really, um... Honestly, it, it almost feels like kind of screaming and crying, trying to receive the, the energy that you want. Whatever resource it is that you're looking for, whatever energy, you're trying to receive it from somewhere, trying to receive it with from somebody else's generosity. But the highest frequency cards here don't really suggest that your solution is to receive this energy from others. The the solution here, and I think this might be like hard, <laughs> hard for some of you to hear, 
is that the actual initiation here that you're going through, the actual lesson for you to learn, if you want to think of it as a lesson, but this is actually a healing process, right? It's a healing process, but it, it might feel like life teaching you really tough lessons. But the lesson here is that this is solved from within. The energy you're looking for comes from within, right? You got authority. I didn't mention it. <laughs> I forgot to mention it in my preamble, but I, before I drew these cards, I was tuning into the archangels, um, who I feel as almost like music, as, as like a different overlapping resonant frequencies. I feel the archangels is very, um, abstract archetypes. Although sometimes I, I also experience them, um, as individuated or personified, um, beings, I, if I'm just tuning into them on an abstract layer, it's, they just feel like wavelengths of consciousness. And this is the card. This is the energy they sent through for you. Authority. This is, this is not, this might be pointing towards authority problems in your own life. For some of you, if you feel like some authority has you under its thumb, whether it's government or a boss or, a, like a romantic partner, even somebody if somebody has you under their thumb, that's actually ha happening because of the vacuum effect. If you are not tuning into and expressing and releasing your own inner authority, which comes from your solar plexus, um, if your solar plexus isn't balanced and stable, and if you aren't confident radiating your inner authority and your self-assurance from that, then that you, then you have um, the, the side effect of that besides just the fact that you will be feeling out of balance and life will be, you'll be facing more challenges in life. The real energetic effect of that is a vacuum. If you are not radiating your own inner authority, then there's like a lack of authority in your energy field and other people's authority will rush in to fill the void. And Yes, it's like, why are they being like that? That That's horrible if this is people you're talking about. But if you can drop out of seeing these people as... Like, try, try, try to just disassociate from the human level, right? Just think about this in pure energetics, just the pure energy of the situation. If you're not radiating authority, then someone else's authority will rush in to fill the gap, right? There, there, there can't be like a gap of energy. The energy will come from somewhere. And that's why this long-term thing for you to learn is to radiate your own inner authority, to let your solar plexus ra and, like radiate its own energy outwards so that you don't have other people's authority coming in to fill the hole, right? Just completely drop out of thinking about the human, like, you know, personal experience of it and just feel into the energetic gap. So it, you don't need to fight off authority figures that you might be having troubles with or even um like negative entities whoever's like whatever's bothering you whatever energy is bothering you don't actually need to fight it off you just need to generate the energy for yourself generate that energy for yourself so that somebody else isn't filling it in for you and so <laughs> then the, the final card we're going to talk about here is the beautiful beautiful high priestess that's why this is a spiritual initiation for you or that's how i know this is a spiritual initiation for you right here she is She's coming out just for you guys and sitting proudly and strong in her own authority on her, I was going to say throne, but the high priestess is not here to rule. She is just here to be. She is just here to exist and to radiate her energy outwards. And this confusion that you're in, um, you're working through that so you, that you can unlock your own inner high priestess. If you feel sometimes stagnating on your spiritual path or just your personal development, it's like this scarcity mentality, this feeling of lack, this feeling of wanting to receive energy from outside of yourself, that is hindering you on your journey that's hindering your progress because 
without a solid foundation of inner authority, without a solid foundation of your own sense of self-worth, without a solid foundation of your inner knowing that you can persevere, not just not just survive any situation and not just persevere through any situation, but your inner knowing that you can thrive in any situation without that foundation, it, it's hard to become the high priestess because she has those frequencies inside of her, right? She has those inside of her. So on your journey to become the high priestess, this is teaching you to feel like the high priestess, to feel like the high priestess. Sorry, my, my ear is ringing. So, <laughs> laying this foundation of your own inner authority, right? Doing this solar plexus healing might take years, right? Might take years. I mean, but don't let me saying that stick you into a timeline unnecessarily where it takes you years, right? If you decide right in this moment that you're going to take a quantum leap and just magically transform yourself and synchronize with a timeline where you have already transformed into the high priestess, where you are fully empowered by your own inner authority, you can do that. You can do that. But um, if you don't do that, <laughs> if you choose to take the longer, slower, more gentle path. Try to remember that whenever you are dealing with scarcity on any level, whether it's financial scarcity, a scarcity of safety, a scarcity of love, whatever it is that you feel like you're lacking, It's like directly tied to your, your solar plexus energy or just your, your feelings of this even ties back into self worth, right? Feelings of low self worth is all tied into this. So it's like your physical resources and your general sense of abundance. And that includes energetic abundance, right? Feeling energized, feeling fully um, empowered to go about your life. Um, It's going to mirror your healing journey. It's going to mirror your healing journey. So every time you heal your solar plexus a little bit more, every time you come more into your own personal empowerment and your own inner authority, that will, like, because it's a mirror effect, the more you heal your solar plexus, the more your abundance will level up, right? You're not going to stay in this feeling of destitution and of lack. You're going to level up all the way together, hand in hand. So you can also look around, you know, say in a year when suddenly um, you have more money and you feel more energized and you feel that just a general sense of being more supported in your life, you'll be able to go, hey, like that's the 3D reality is reflecting back to me my own healing experience, my own healing experience. So you'll be able to observe this in your reality. It will manifest as you heal and empower yourself in the, the 3D reality reflects your energetic state by manifesting more abundance for you. And, but it goes, this goes way beyond just the physical. The physical is the kind of like the playground, right? The, the, the playing field, if you will. But this all culminates in you feeling so so really understanding on a very deep, deep soul level that you are the high priestess. And this is really important because once you completely like wake up one morning and realize that you are your own high priestess, you would never even watch a video like this again. Right? Um, it, this is, I, I was actually thinking the other day, I was like all people who put tarot readings on YouTube, if we all kind of succeeded in our function 
it would be to entirely empower everyone to be their own high priestess, right? So that nobody would ever want to watch another tarot reading again. We put ourselves out of business because no one would ever need any more guidance from outside sources. They would receive all of their guidance from within. So um, don't be surprised if at some point on your journey, you suddenly like never want any outside guidance. You just decide, oh, I don't need to watch any videos from anybody. I don't need to read anybody's blogs. I don't need to check social media for this, this, and that. And it, it can just all, it would all just magically like fall away out of your reality because you are your own high priestess. And that would put you in a position where you no longer interact with people on a like give and take level, you would actually transcend this generosity, destitution, <laughs> like polarity here. The high priestess would transcend above that and she would just interact with others through a an abundance of overflow. She would just completely overflow. She would be able to achieve this goal of being so generous and so full of care and guidance for others because it just overflows from her. It just completely overflows and ripples and more and more and more of it. And she's like this endless well bubbling up. So yeah, I feel like just, just know that that is in your future, right? That's a, a potential future timeline for you. Like, and I, I mean, I feel as long as you guys keep breathing and walk your journey, you're going to get there, right? You're going to get there. This is a highly likely <laughs> long-term, um, outcome, I think for you guys to be this high priestess who no long, who, who has, first of all, resolved, um, a huge chunk of their inner imbalances to the point where they can embody this high priestess energy. And then be able to flow it out to others from a place of just pure, pure radiance, right? R radiance. Like the sun doesn't feel that we're taking advantage of him because we are bathing in his sunlight, right? We're not sucking the sun dry. We're not, we're not harming the sun at all. And yet we all live because of the sun's rays, <laughs> right? If you can just radiate your light like that, then no one can ever take anything from you because you're just shining so bright from within, right? You're shining like this from your inner authority. If you shine like that, that is how you can break out of this cycle. And that is the foundation for you to lay at this time over the next however long you want probably years, <laughs> probably a few years, right? A couple of years, maybe, maybe one year, whatever, whatever you want, whatever you want, you decide, right? <laughs> but it's going to be, um, important to identify the, the vacuums inside of yourself, right? Where do you, um, where do you lack radiance inside of you? Where do you, where, what, what, which one of your chakras is not radiating, right? What, what, what emotion what benevolent, what beautiful, what high frequency emotion are you, are you unable to radiate at this time? Like look inside of you and find out what, what, what part of you is contracting, what is curling in on, on itself, what is closing up, what is cringing, what is making itself small. Identify those pieces and parts of yourself and then just love them and focus on them and invite them to open up and to shine and to radiate and to flow outwards because then there will be no more energetic vacuums inside of you and then you won't have other people flowing their alien energy into you, right? Even if these other people have high frequency, positive, benevolent energy, you don't necessarily want their energy, right? You're here to be you. You're here to be yourself. You're here to offer your own energy to the world. So let your solar plexus radiate, right? Let it shine, let it shine so that you can become your own personal high priestess. I'm going to leave you guys there. Good luck on your journey. Bye. <laughs>
Hey, pile two, welcome to your reading. Oh, <laughs> you got cards coming out. Okay, yeah, five of swords. Um, here, this is called defeat in this deck. <laughs> um, I have a new relationship with the five of swords. It's traditionally just seen as defeat. Yes, I mean, that's true, but I'm starting to see how that actually serves us and what that is actually about. Like, I, I get these, I have these experiences where just, the universe just shows me a new way of looking at a card and the five of swords yes it feels like a defeat right that's why a lot of authors will write something like defeat in the guidebook or on the card but what it is 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 i could just <laughs> i could keep repeating myself but letting go of something that you want desperately to hang on to, but that is no good for you. And it might actually be something that you love and that feels right for you and feels benevolent for you, but it's just not part of your future, right? It's something that was part of your past. It's not going to be part of the future, even if it is beautiful and even if you love it. And it's something that needs to be let, like it that needs to go. Um, I don't know if that camera caught that, but this card also just popped out. Ace of Wands, energy. This is uh, making my crown itch, just staring at it because we have this wand with this moon on it and this crystal all up in this blood moon really making my crown itch. So you guys have energy coming down from on high and you're raising your frequency, leaving the 3D behind. This, this, uh, this five of swords to me is whatever you think you're leaving behind and whatever you think you've lost or whatever you are afraid of losing you know, whatever it is, the root cause of this problem is that you're actually just afraid of leaving the 3D behind altogether. It, it's like ascension fears, <laughs> ascension fears, afraid of how much things are going to change, afraid of leaving your life behind and afraid of being propelled into some strange new future where Nothing makes sense anymore. Um, <laughs> moon. <sighs> Needing to use your intuition right now as your only way of moving forward because the mind is having this feeling of defeat. The mind doesn't know how to move forward because as you raise your frequency into this new it it's like an attic door there's, a, there's an attic door above you and you're reaching up opening the attic door and that cold air blasts down onto you and it's dusty and you go I don't want to go up there. That's creepy and weird. <laughs> um, and I don't know what's up there, <laughs> but you're going up that ladder, kicking or screaming, right? You can, you can either just center yourself and walk up the ladder, take a deep breath and see what's to be seen, or you can hesitate for as long as you want, but hesitating will never actually help you feel any better. It's just something you can do to delay. Archangel Ariel, elemental magic. For this card, I actually wanna show you, just there's just a little blurb in the book. Journey with me through the elements and harness their power, strength, and vitality. Stand solid and reach out to meet your full potential. You are a master creator with elemental magic. So 
So you guys are Some of you are connecting with fairies, um, elementals, the fae, whether you know it or not. Um, but others of you are, I mean, all of you are trying to kindle. I'm sorry, I was just horribly interrupted. <laughs> but I think I was saying um, you guys are trying to kindle your magic, right? You've got your magic wand and... Maybe you feel, maybe this is one of the things that you feel defeated about, that it's not working, that you feel like it's not working, or maybe even that you've lost it, but <sighs> part of the initiation here is that your magic cannot be unlocked in a 3D way. It cannot be unlocked in a linear way. It's not something you learn by taking a class. It's not something you even remember from past lives, although you do retrieve it from past lives, but not in the way you think. You, you just retrieve the energy of it, um, the movement of it, the feeling of it. You don't need to actually remember specifically what you did in past lives. You just retrieve the energetic imprint of what you did in past lives. And then you need to follow your your just inner impulses. It's not even following your intuition. It's just like, just do it. <laughs> just do it. And you will might be surprised to find how simple it is and how you don't need a bunch of extra steps and you don't need to follow a bunch of processes. You can just be the magic. Just be the, be the magic. Embody your magic. And but for you, this, this really goes, be, this isn't really just about unlocking your magic. This is what foundation are you guys laying, right? But it, you're not really laying a foundation. You're ascending to a new one. The, the thing that is your ceiling right now is going to be your floor once you get up there. Once you go through that attic door, you thought that was the ceiling. You thought that was the top. You thought that was like the top of everything. But it's like, no, then you're going to be standing on it. <laughs> it's going to be a new ceiling. I actually have to draw you guys a picture because I'm not going to be able to explain this. The picture probably won't help it make sense either, but this to me is like a Merkaba upgrade and I have been receiving this or like sensing this myself over the past few days. I don't really understand it, but I'm going to try to share my impressions of this for the moment. So let me get some paper. Okay. I'm sure y'all know, you know, the basic Merkaba the six pointed star, man, I can't even draw stars. I'm like so bad, but <laughs> so just bear with me here. You know, we've got the upper Merk Merkaba, the upper half, the bottom half, six pointed star, you know, your root is down here, your crown is up here and your heart is in the middle, right? <laughs> um, and really, you know, this is a 2D representation really when these are, are, are around you, they're pyramids, right? Two, two pyramids stacked on top of each other. So, what I have been like very literally sensing like in my body and around me in my energy field. And I've been feeling this in private readings as well. A couple of people definitely have been having these like massive crown openings and I feel them like an actual wedge is going down into my crown. Um, it's like so many of us are having our crown chakras completely blown open and they go in a pyramid shape, like in a, in a wedge triangle shape, what have you. <laughs> and, um, and really this is like the the uh, soul star chakra coming online to a higher degree, the eighth and ninth chakras, um, if you want to call them that, you know, your higher chakras, the transpersonal chakras all opening up, coming online. But I've been feeling it's not just an opening up, it's not just a connection right now, it's a like movement. Like I, I don't know if it makes sense to say that I am moving or that my Merkaba is moving, I, I don't know, but something is shifting around and it's not quite like this anymore. I keep seeing like many of these, if you just keep imagining these pyramids all chaining together and going on top of each other. So what I feel like is happening is like there is a third pyramid coming down, coming down like, like a third, <laughs> a third pyramid, a third like down, like with the pointy side down is coming down into the top so that 
like it's going to look something like this. I see look I can't even can't even draw like a star properly <laughs> um so here we are again with the same thing here's the heart you know here's the root down here and but there's like this third pyramid coming in like this and and really it can just keep chaining upwards right it just chains like that and if you really can tune into that you can access your own infinity, right? This is infinite, this goes infinitely up and it doesn't just go up, it also goes side to side, you know, like connecting with like other Merkaba stars over there and it's like a whole crazy globe, multi-dimensional globe of all of these light bodies all intersecting and connecting. It's like everything is linking up, everything is chaining up, but that's the, the bigger picture. What really, um, I've been feeling is this feeling of this third pyramid descending down and it's anchoring itself the point is anchoring itself into my heart and it's completely opening up this level new level of perception above my crown right it's like this used to be my crown but now like my crown can perceive all of this area before i used to just be able to just kind of like send and receive messages right the crown used to be a transmitter it used to be able to send and receive messages but now it's like the crown is turning into an eyeball um imagine if your crown and your third eye like melded together and became an eyeball on the top of your head and that eyeball could look up right and it could see out into the world that the crown chakra looks into up into your you know your other transpersonal chakras up there it's now gazing upward because this third layer of the merkaba has come down and it, this changes everything because now instead of rooting into your root right instead of your root chakra being the bottom of you you're now there's this new experience of rooting into the heart the heart is now your foundation the heart is now where your feet are you you ground into your own heart i've said that before right i've, I've been talking about this for a while without really understanding what I was saying, but there's grounding into your heart. You ground into your heart because there's these new levels of perception, these new horizons, these new horizons. And like, I don't know if, 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 if the crown and third eye can like meld together and perceive this higher realm but I, to myself I've been calling this new sense of perception this being ability to gaze upward into this new area as the fifth horizon that's what came to me when I was kind of sensing it because I can't really see into it I can't really hear things up there but I, I can sense and perceive it somehow some way and I know that more sensory experience is coming but first it's a sensation it's a feeling it's a knowing right it's just a general sensation that this whole fifth world this whole fifth horizon it's like literally if you just want to take a visual metaphor if you're just looking out at your world right and you can see the horizon maybe you're maybe you're on the beach maybe you're on the prairie somewhere but you can literally see the horizon you can see the sky up above or the ground below and the sky up above and then literally if you just imagine in some multi-dimensional way if a whole another horizon just opened up like a, a literal fifth horizon just opened right up and you could see into a whole new dimension a whole new reality a whole new experience just completely new in in the same way that you look up at the sky the same way that you look up at the stars if you could look up with your third eye and there it is the fifth horizon <laughs> so really i that's all that's the best i can do to try to impart my impressions upon you guys <laughs> I guess I could sum this up as saying I think you guys are having a Merkaba upgrade, a light body upgrade, and a literal third piece of your Merkaba is synchronizing with you and buckle in because that, that there's a whole new expanse out there for you to perceive. And you, I mean, some of you with really advanced, um, you know, clairvoyance or clairaudience might be able to actually see or hear into this higher realm. Um, for most of us, it's going to be a matter of just sensing it, feeling it, perceiving it in a less obvious way. But there is purpose to that because we are meant to practice perceiving in that way, right? We are meant to 
learn that it's not all about seeing and hearing. The seeing and hearing is a human level thing. So we're actually deliberately withholding that from ourselves and we're meant to just feel it. And once we become confident enough in sensing it and feeling it and perceiving it in a subtle way, right, then comes more vision and hearing and like more obvious sensations. So <sighs> yeah, and I am just remembering that last December solstice, um, I had an experience like this where I, I, I guess I didn't even clue into this. I'd kind of forgotten about it. I had an experience of receiving um, the a third layer of my light body and like the third pyramid of the Merkaba and it has a name. It's a stellated dodecahedron <laughs> because if you take three pyramids, put them all together, and you can imagine how that fits. Um, it's really, I'm really bad at spatial rotation and imagining geometry, but there is a way you can look it up. There's a, there's a stellated dodecahedron. There's a way for three pyramids to go together and make a 12 pointed star. that's essentially what you're doing. You are like synchronizing with or embodying the third level of your light body. And I guess you could call it the stellated dodecahedron if you want to do some Googling. That might turn up some information for you. But from what I remember Googling about this, um, you know, like seven months ago or whatever it was, eight months ago, I did not have a ton of luck, but I got a few tidbits. And it's very strange to me that I forgot all about that for a few months, but it's coming back now. So th that tells me a few things. Since my experience of this light body expansion began eight months ago, and then it's coming back to me now, that tells me that this doesn't necessarily just come on all at once. This can be a long-term thing where it comes and goes and so you guys might have a similar experience where you, th this is intense for you now and then in six months um, it kind of comes back and it comes in waves because I don't know, I don't know how you grow new light bodies, right? I don't really know how that works, but that's I think why this is coming up in your long-term foundations. You're essentially, the foundation you are building right now is an expanded light body. Expanded light body. That's pretty cool, guys. <laughs> so... Um, I'm going to just leave you with that. Um, if this didn't make any sense, that's fine. You received the energy and it will unpack itself with perfect synchronicity as it's supposed to. So good luck. I love you guys. Bye. Hello, card number three. Welcome to your reading. You guys' energy feels lighter. <laughs> Nine of Wands, Resilience. So you guys are hanging in there kind of despite everything that's been happening around you. <laughs> Thank you for bringing in your resiliency. I appreciate it. <laughs> Princess of Wands, Exploration. Two Wands. This is fire energy. This is passion. This is inner strength. This is understanding that the world and the cosmos belongs to the brave. Ten of Wands. Fortune. Or, sorry, that's not Ten of Wands. That is just Major Arcana. That is just the Wheel of Fortune card. <laughs> I just saw the ten there and still thinking of fire change <sighs> bottom of your deck perseverance this is what you're coming off from I feel like you guys have already been laying a foundation for a long time and that you're hoping <laughs> that your foundation it's going to be paying off sooner rather than later and honestly it seems like it is I think for you guys this 
you guys are in a little bit of a different spot. Your foundations are already laid. You have been persevering. You have been patient. You have paid your dues. You have put in your time. You have put in the work. It's already established. And I don't know if things are going to take off for you like right this second, but your time frame here feels much shorter there. It's like I'm actually seeing like a foundation of a house being laid and it's like 90% done. So take the number with a grain of salt, right? But it's like, you guys are pretty close. You guys are going to manifest your big shift. You're going to have your event, whatever it is. Um, sooner rather than later, your guys' energy is much lighter and freer than some of the other like packets of energy I've seen with this reading. And... It's just looking looking at these cards, this makes me feel that you guys want to go out and experience the world. Like this could be quitting your job, like back case, back case? what am I saying? <laughs> backpack to, or briefcase to backpack. You know when people say briefcase to backpack, meaning that they're quitting their corporate job and going out and backpacking the world. Look, this is like wanting a change that frees you up from responsibilities, right? You've been, you've been doing it, you've been in it. Uh, the long slog, you guys have been doing it, but you have done it with a lot of grace. You have done it with a lot of like maturity. You really took responsibility for whatever it was you took responsibility for. And I think for a few of you, whatever you have been responsible for, it wasn't even your responsibility. You just decided to take that on. <laughs> and maybe um, a few of you might regret taking on so much and having all this responsibility or sometimes regretting the mistakes that you made in the past that put you into this situation. Like, just for example, this could be somebody who got like a really bad car loan and then the car broke and then, uh, you know, the dealership closed down so you couldn't like take the car back and you just got totally screwed over so you didn't pay off the car loan. You just decided to take the hit on your credit and that's been like dogging your tail for a long time, right? Um, it's, you know, that's whatever it is, it's fine. Like if mistakes in the past, if you've been paying for your past mistakes, it, it's all shifting out. Your, your time of doing things <laughs> because the past has been tying you down is coming to an end sooner rather than later. Like you literally have the page of wands here or in this case, Princess of Wands, she is all about going to explore the world. She has her walking staff in hand. She's like, yes, I don't even need shoes. I'm just going out to see what there is to see. I'm going out to experience it. And she is brave and fearless and doesn't allow things like, oh, you shouldn't go to that country. It's too dangerous for tourists. She doesn't let that kind of thing stop her. <laughs> and people go, oh, you know, it's too hard to travel right now. You should just stay home. She doesn't let that stop her. She is going out to seek her, to seek her new reality. It's like your, the reality that you've been in is stale and is closing in around you. And it is time to seek your new reality, to find it out there in the universe and I mean, you've got, then you've got two cards of change, right? The Wheel of Fortune just means that things are changing, things are happening, and then literally you got two of discs, change. <laughs> and there's a big contrast here between, you know, light and dark. This is a bit of a yin-yang symbolism, obviously, and it's so much like the Fortune's card. So wherever you've been in, it's about to be the opposite. Or like when you finally get to this, um shift that you're experiencing it's going to be a like a big pole shift you're going to flip to the opposite experience and it, it i mean for you guys this, this just feels like it's an opening up that it's an improvement it doesn't feel like you're gonna fall back you're, you're falling upwards you're rising up you're moving to an expansive reality there's going to be so much more space wherever you're going um there's going to be more room to grow, more room to experience, some more space in your reality, both, I think, you know, physically, but also just emotionally, um, intellectually. <laughs> um, I don't, I'm not sure what that means, but just like, ah, uh, you will no longer feel constricted. I can feel opening up. And that brings me to the foundation that you're laying, your vulnerability opening up. So 
what I'm getting with this is if you want your world to be open, if you want your reality to be open, if you want everything to just blossom and feel free, you need to start on the inside. <laughs> you need to feel free within, right? And you need to open up in specifically with this card. I mean, you're being asked to be vulnerable, like literally. This is the vulnerability, right? Um, so on some level, maybe maybe it's because you guys are so independent maybe because it because you guys have had to be caregivers in one way or the another or because you've always had to be responsible um or maybe just because you guys are like fucking baller and you don't need anybody right um you, you guys are just like i got this i take care of myself i take care of everybody else like what up you don't you don't <laughs> you don't need um anything from anybody really and I think, yeah, and I, I just found myself staring at these little stones here. Um, I, I know what they're called, but now I can't remember because when I'm increasingly, when I'm doing readings, I'm in an increasingly deeper channeling state and I can't remember things like even what the name of my favorite rock is, right? I, I can't remember. Um, but I know these are heart chakra, card, heart chakra rocks, <laughs> heart chakra stones. Um, A lot to do with forgiveness with these um, like some heart chakra stones like this strawberry quartz is has an emphasis on self-love these stones that I was really drawn to for you guys the emphasis is it on forgiveness so is it forgiving others for having damaged you in the past when you opened up have you had experiences of opening up to somebody and then like immediately regretting it? And you learned never to be vulnerable? You, you probably don't really see this as a problem. You probably see this as a strength. And honestly, it has been a strength. It has seen you through many hard times and it has really allowed you to thrive in difficult situations and to rise above it all. It, it was like armor that you wore around your heart and it protected you and it's been really good. <laughs> it's been good for you, but it's not really compatible with the future that you are trying to align with. You wanna go out and be free and feel free and you want to go out and experience the world and you want to have intimate connections with others and intimate connections with places, even just with energies, right? Um, and you will have a more profound, more fulfilling experience if you can open up if you can open up, like period, right? If you can be vulnerable with other people. Um, and I think the universe will kind of block your path a little bit because you are really meant to open up to new levels of vulnerability before you strike off on your new journey because being vulnerable will enhance your journey so much. It will enhance your experience. It will allow you to really be present in the moment and it will open up doors for you. It will let your vulnerability in some way that won't make sense to you right now is actually going to like inspire and enable and create the new experience for you. You know, just as an example, if you open up and be, um, allow yourself to be vulnerable on an interpersonal, in an interpersonal way, right, to other people. This could be like finding your dream partner who also wants to travel the world just like you do, right? And then it becomes so much easier to meet, you, to, to like accomplish your dream because you, now you can do it together, right? And the universe want, wanted to align you to that experience. Um, but it, it all starts first need to open up to your vulnerability. So, <laughs> and some way, opening up to your vulnerability, opening up to being vulnerable is going to require that you forgive something or somebody, right? What is it? What is it for you? What do you need to forgive? Do you need to forgive yourself for having been vulnerable in the past? Do you blame yourself for being weak, as you might call it? Blame yourself for being too sensitive? It's going to be different for everybody, right? But yeah, the, the trick here is that somehow, some way, um, being 
more sensitive, being more open, being more willing to co-create and interconnect with others will open up your world. If you are closed off, your reality is closed off. If you open up and blossom like, like a lotus flower, right? <laughs> then your reality will open up and blossom like a lotus flower. And really guys, I think that's it for you. Your reading is a lot shorter than the first two I did, but I don't think I need to bog this down by saying any, every, anything else. That's, that's it. You guys are like so good to go. You are so set. There's just this little bit of inner work that it's like kind of checking the last box off. There's just this one last lesson for you to learn. And it's not because you've done anything wrong. It's not because you're failing. It's literally because you want to, you're going to want to be more open when you see how much more awesome your life gets, right? You, you want, you, you really like just Trust yourself on this one. You're going, to, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy the experience of being more open and it is going to open up the world for you. So it's, it's a really just beautiful, beneficial thing. You're just probably not going to like it because like you're, you like the, the beginning of it, right? You guys are probably not going to like having to admit to yourself that you need to take some of those shields down off your heart, that you need to dismantle some of your armor, that it's okay to like cry in front of other people, right? Stuff like that. Just, just whatever it is. You're probably not going to like the idea of it. You're sitting here going like, ugh, like, really <laughs> really um but like i've i i've been there for me you know taking taking my boundaries down is like a constant uh thing for me i'm always learning lessons about vulnerability like <sighs> always learning to relax always learning to be more open so i totally get it um this reading is all, honestly, it's also for me. <laughs> I, I will, I will listen to my own words here. This reading is also for me. Um, so we will all be working on this together, but we are, just remember, we are all going beautiful places to a more open, expansive, and unpredictable world. It's going to be, you, you are going to be walking into the unknown, but with this newfound sense of openness and spontaneity, and just feelings of freedom that's gonna make walking into the unknown so much more exhilarating. So good luck guys, sending you so much love and light. Bye. Hey, card number four, welcome to your reading. Are you guys having sacral problems? <laughs> um, it's just literally as soon as I uh, like said hi to you guys, I got, man, um, pains in my sacral area. Let me just, I'll put it that way. <laughs> so may maybe that's, that could just be literally one of you. Um, I mean, first card up, two of wands, planning. Ace of Swords, Clarity. Five of Discs, Destitution. Judgment. Okay, I think this is just for literally one person, but is somebody watching this like planning on having a baby? <laughs> um, or something to that extent. You, okay, this is literally for the one person who is planning on having a baby. Okay, <laughs> like um, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna do the whole reading, but I just have a message for that one person. Okay, if you're planning on having a baby, but you're trying to figure out how to pull it off because you're worried that you don't have enough money, you're letting the money thing um, essentially affect your family planning choices and. On the one hand, yes, that is a responsible human thing to do because of course you don't want to have a baby who, if you don't, if you don't feel like you have enough money, but the thing is you'll probably never feel like you have enough money. Okay. You'll never feel like you have enough money. Um, and I actually know someone who just received one and a half million 
US dollars and they keep calling themselves the brokest millionaire, right? The brokest millionaire. Uh, and they keep saying they can't afford to do things, but they literally have a million and a half US dollars in the bank. So there's no amount of money that will ever make them feel financially secure. Same thing with you guys. You will never have enough money to make you feel like you have enough money to have a baby. So, um, you know, the message here is like, do, do what you can to be financially prepared. But if you really feel in your heart that this is the time, then do it, <laughs> then do it, right? Um, because the, the money thing will never really go away as long as you keep worrying about it. And actually, the more you allow money to direct your choices, you will just continue to have financial problems. <laughs> and if the rest of you have been listening to that, I, I think that that one really specific example um, really gives me a clue into what's going on with the rest of you because I think the rest of you are having the same type of thing. You're planning something, you're really seeking clarity on it, you have an idea of something you want to do, but you know, maybe it's starting a business, maybe it's moving. Um, going back to school, like you, whatever it is, you're, you're trying to figure out how to do something, but this scarcity mentality is holding you back. For some of you, it's not money. For some of you, it's like, for some of you, you're maybe trying to figure out how to pay for school or trying to figure out how to get a loan to start a business. For some of you, you feel like you don't have enough energy to do the thing, right? Don't have enough energy to be a parent. Don't have enough energy to have a business. Don't have enough energy to get off the couch and put on pants, right? For, for some of you, this could be like, how do I get my life together? But I just can't, I can't, I'm not feeling it, right? Not feeling it whatsoever. Um, I think just the, the message about the lack, the thing that you lack is try to just do it anyway because you will never feel like you have enough. You will never feel like you have enough. Um, I mean, to be clear, I'm not giving you a message of doom here. At some point in your life, you will come into a transformation. You will heal your root chakra problems um, and sacral sh chakra problems for some people. You will heal those. You will come into an understanding of abundance energetics and you will <laughs> finally feel like you have enough. But it's like um, just trying to work harder or just trying to like av avoid energy draining experiences, you know, just tr just trying to budget harder. That's not really the solution to your problem. That will never get you to a state where you feel like you you have enough. You need to, in order to feel like you have enough in order to accomplish your goal. I mean, if you're watching this video, <laughs> you you probably want the energetic answer, right? And the energetic answer is to literally feel like you have enough. Feel like it now understand that abundance of whatever it is, is a literal frequency flying around, like a literal vibration in the air, <laughs> you know? It's like a radio signal in the air. It is a literal frequency, it is a feeling, and you can use your feelings to tune into the feeling of abundance exactly the way you tune in a radio to your favorite radio station. So identify the radio station you wanna to listen to. That's abundance, right? You want to feel abundance. So you take your feelings and you Tune into abundance, right? You, you literally just start to feel it. And if you are brand new to trying to tune into energies, you're going to be like, what? Like, that doesn't make any sense. How do I do that? How do I, I don't have, like, I don't have a knob, right? How do I just tune myself into an energy? And um, yeah, I mean, I totally get it, right? That doesn't make any sense. When I first woke up and I started looking up how to be psychic and stuff, and I was like, how do people, like, see things how do people know things and everyone started talking about tuning into energy and I was like what the hell does that mean how do you do that it doesn't make any sense right um man and it's funny now it's so second nature to me it's almost hard to describe but the, I think the clue here is that there aren't really any steps it is actually way simpler than your mind is trying to make it out you don't have to do anything it's not about doing any kind of specific ritual, although you can do rituals if they help you. If, if any, if there is an act, if, there, if there's a thing you do that helps you, then do that. But you don't need to do any of that. That's not actually what does it. It is just your intention. If you will, it is just your imagination. <laughs> Literally your imagination. Your imagination is a tool. And in fact, if you feel like, hey, I can't tune into energy because my body doesn't have an energy knob, right? Well, it, it actually does. And it's called your imagination. Um, we have just 
been taught, right? We have been forced to forget that our imagination is real, like, right? Like social conditioning has just taught us that our imagination is fake. It's nothing. It's just, it just makes shit up, right? That our imagination is nothing. But I would like to argue that your imagination is your psychic knob. <laughs> it is your, the thing that takes you where you want to go. So if you want to have a more abundant life, or if you want to have more energy in your life, or just what literally whatever it is, if you want to tune into an energy, you can start by just um, imagining what that would feel like. And again, it's normal for this to be hard at first. If, you, if you've never done, if you've never deliberately done it in your life, then of course you're, it's going to be like hard to like di deliberately shift and flow your, your emotions like that. It is tough because especially if you've had an experience of feeling like your emotions are out of your control, right? I think we've all felt that it's at some point. Some of us have lived whole lives where we feel like we've never been in control of our emotions, right? Um, so what can help you if you feel like you can't use your imagination to tune your emotions, can you use your imagination to guide your thoughts, right? It might be easier for you to guide your thoughts. And this is where using tools might help, right? If you're trying to feel abundant, maybe you, maybe on the first day you try to feel abundant, you won't actually feel abundant, right? But you can definitely think about abundance because you can just write down the word abundance, right? And then you can look at it and you can look at the word abundance and you can stare at it and go, yep, I'm thinking about abundance. I'm not feeling abundant, but I'm thinking about it. <laughs> and that can be a place to start. And then every day, stare at your word abundance, write it down a hundred times if you want to, um, do anything, like grab a rock, right? Like a, a piece of obsidian. If that, if, if obsidian can represent abundance, it can represent root chakra stuff. If that can help you feel like abundance then stare at a rock, right? D do <laughs> anything that makes you think about abundance. Some people even go so far as to set an alarm on their phone like five times a day. And when the alarm goes off, they sit and they just think abundance, 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 or whatever it is, right? If you're trying to tune into something else, tune in, tune into that, replace abundance with, with anything. But I think we could all use more abundance. So I'm going to roll with that as the example. Just think about it. And then as you get used to guiding your thoughts that way, you've, you're now successfully tuning your thoughts to think about something, then it gets easier to trickle that down into your feelings. And you might start to feel abundance. What does it feel like? You know, sit down and have an immersive experience. You know, even if you're just falling asleep at night, if that's the only five minutes you have, just lie there and imagine yourself in your most abundant life. You can do it right now. What does it feel like? Where are you? Where are you? What is, if you had a hundred billion dollars, right? Where would you be? What would you be doing? What does that look like? What do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? Are you sitting still or are you moving? What are you doing? How does it feel? How does that make you feel to lit, to just, to just completely immerse yourself in an imaginary moment of perfect abundance? How does that make you feel? What would that feel like? <sighs> yes. Right. Feel it, feel it. Now you've successfully tuned into the feeling of abundance. You've tuned into the frequency of abundance. You've done it. That's all there is to it. Um, if some of you want to take it further and some of you do, because we got the judgment card, right? This is a spiritual portal to your next level. So, um, the thing that you're trying to do, have a baby, have a business, become more psychic, have a spiritual, a spiritual up leveling, whatever it is you're trying to do. It's coming, right? This judgment card does not come out for no reason. It comes out because the next level is going to be available to you. It is coming through. You're, uh, you're lying, you're, you're laying down your foundation right now that is going to push you through up onto the next level of your experience into your new world, into your reality. For anybody who's watching this, trying to um, really have like a spiritual or psychic or energetic up leveling. Um, spend the inv invitation here is to spend time practicing tuning into energy. Uh, now I'm thinking about like psychics and channeling. Some of you might even want to like be a channel, right? To to channel to trans channel 
um, interdimensional beings, right? You, you, some of you want to go really far with this. Um, so you start by tuning into energies. You start by just tuning into it. So, you know, walk through the process of tuning into abundance, right? Well, now, like, now you, you can do that with literally anything that you can imagine in all the multiverse, right? Like for me, um, I tune into planets or <laughs> for this reading, I was actually tuning into the archangels and I, I forgot to talk about that. Maybe I won't even put it in the in the thumbnail because I forgot to mention it. But, um, you know, if I want to channel the planet Saturn, for example, I just think about him. At first, you know, I'll, you know, I'll just think, what does he look like? <laughs> you know, what, what would it feel like to be Saturn? And I can just feel feel for his frequency and then I can feel feel him coming through <laughs> and he's uh, chuckling because that I used him as an example right so you can you can literally like talk to planets that way I, I think the whole planet channeling seems to be something that not very many people do I don't know if that means people can't do it I think it just means people aren't interested in doing it so whatever it is right you if you want to talk to your own guardian angel or you want to talk to an eighth dimensional collective out there in the universe whatever energy you want to channel or communicate with or just feel to just vibe with you you, you tune into their energy the same way you tune into the feeling of abundance and a big trick one one caveat here is that don't um fall into that trap of thinking that these energies are way high out there right you might feel like oh to tune into the archangels they're way out there they're so far away no, they're right inside of you, right? These frequencies literally exist inside of you. You're in your heart, right? Your heart is the antenna. Your heart is the antenna and the frequencies are all there. It doesn't matter if you're trying to tune into abundance or a planet or an angel or some other being. It doesn't matter. The frequencies are all inside of you. So when you do go to tune in, make sure it's tuning in, right? Tuning into inside of you, tuning into your heart not looking out you don't need to reach out you don't need to try and stretch out to get something out there no it's inside so yeah and i never flipped up this card archangel gabriel divine inner strength i want to actually show you the blurb in the book from that You are divinity. At times you feel separated, lost, and alone. Yet you can never be apart from your divine spark. You are the physicality of source. Trust in your inner strength. Yeah, you have all of the energy, all of the abundance, all of the inner strength that you need in order to transcend to this next level. The foundation that you are laying is all about trusting that you already have what you need, trusting that it's already inside of you, trusting that it's there, trusting that you can tune into it, trusting that you can tune into it. Whatever you're planning about the future, tune into that as well, right? If you want to have a business, just like we tuned into abundance, tune into what it would feel like to have that successful business and then just hold the vision, hold the vision. Hold the feeling, hold the frequency, just hang on to it. Whatever you want to manifest, tune into it. <laughs> tune into it. And at the end of your long journey, you guys, I feel like there could be immense variation on how long you guys are going to spend laying down this foundation. Some of you could walk away from this video and like instantly be like, wow, now I completely get how to tune into something and you can just go off and start tuning into everything and then really quickly manifesting your new reality. Others of you are going to be on this kind of longer path, especially if your struggle is money um, or like physical energy in your body because those are like denser energies. They're literally more like physical grounded things. <laughs> so um be a little bit of a longer journey but it's it's fine you're going to get there just keep tuning into the frequency that you want to feel now and then understand that it is there it is there right the money the, the money is literally there the energy is literally there you just need to tune into it and synchronize it and really allow yourself to receive it allow yourself to receive it 
and I think just the final message, I think just to reiterate is you will find success in this, right? Judgment, your bigger, better, brighter, more expanded future. It's out there. It, it It's coming. And really, like, it's already here, right? It's already inside of you. Um, thinking that it's in a future, that, that that is just the linear human mind, right? We think that the future is out there, over there, that it's not here, but really it, everything isn't, right? It's not linear. It's not. Time is not linear. We're just experiencing it as linear. This is, everything already exists. All potential possible futures already exist. Everything that you can, could be in the future, you already are now. It's just a matter of like allowing you, to, allowing yourself to vibrate that way now. If you want to, whatever you want to have in your future, you can vibrate that way now and then it will, then it will be here because the free, then you have invited the frequency to express itself. <laughs> so Yeah, I mean, I could go on a much longer rant about dropping out of a linear experience of time. But that doesn't really feel like the thing to do right now for whatever reason. So I will just leave you with an invitation to examine your perception of time. And if you feel like you're ever caught in a time trap of any kind, just explore using your ability to tune into energies and using your imagination as a guide. Explore what it would mean for you to drop out of a linear experience of time. What if you ascended to a non-linear experience of time? What would that be like for you? I think that's just something for you guys to feel into and explore on your own and not for me to lecture about at length. <laughs> so I'm going to leave you guys there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.